Hi, Mr. Zapone here, and today we're going to ask, or we're going to answer the question of how does a bulb thermometer work. So I have a bulb thermometer here, and we're going to see what it's made of, and understand the principles that make it work. Uh, background information that's key for understanding how a thermometer works is that substances expand when heated. Uh, connect their matter, as you apply energy, as you heat a substance, it moves faster, gets more energy. And when you chill a substance, they will contract. Or as the temperature goes up, the volume of an object increases. Temperature increases, volume increases, thermal expansion. As the temperature goes down, volume goes down. These are key principles of science that we should have covered in terms of density and the kinetic theory of matter. So taking a peek at a bulb thermometer, what we have is a glass tube filled with red colored alcohol. And we use alcohol because it expands and it contracts very easily. It has something called the low vapor pressure, which we don't really need to get into right now. But I also like to add that there's alcohol put in this glass bowl, but it is also a vacuum. And by vacuum, I mean it is empty. It is devoid of air. So that will allow the alcohol to rise up and down much more easily. Uh, the reason we don't use mercury anymore is because mercury is considered toxic or poisonous and if we were to drop one of these in school we'd actually have to evacuate the school and probably call in a special team to remove the mercury so that's something we don't use anymore um, as the temperature increases these molecules they get more energy they move faster and faster they expand a little bit as substances get heated they expand as the temperature goes up the volume goes up so they simply, the mercury rises, or the alcohol, the colored alcohol, rises up the glass tube. The glass is also going to expand. When you heat the glass, it'll expand a little bit, but very, very, very small, a very by a very negligible amount, so we don't have to worry about that. It's really just the liquid with a low vapor pressure, pressure inside of a vacuum that is going to expand up the tube. Uh, we can put markings on the sides of our thermometer create a temperature scale and we kind of can then record if the temperature goes from say here to here we know that it went up by about 20 degrees it went from 10 to 30 and it's important to know that temperature scales are arbitrary and comparative they're man-made you could come up with your own temperature scale if you wanted to you could or I could come up with mine. I could call it uh, degrees sapone. I could say that 4.9 degrees sapone is going to be the freezing point of water, and 13.2 degrees sapone will be the boiling point. No one's going to use my temperature scale, but you could come up with your own if you wanted to, if you had a blank thermometer. Uh, the, we have a temperature scale. Zero is the freezing point for Celsius, 32 for Fahrenheit, and 100 is the boiling point in Celsius, 212 in Fahrenheit. So there are different temperature scales. None of them are more correct than the others. I like the Kelvin scale the best because it's more of a scientific scale, but for the most part, they are comparative and man-made, and so on. Uh, as temperature cools, as things get less energy, they are going to contract. The liquid goes back down. It's a real simple process. As the liquid inside heats up, it expands. As it cools down, it contracts, and this simply just follows basic thermal expansion rules. As temperature goes up, volume goes up, same principles behind the hot air balloon, and so on. So hopefully that helps explain how a bulb thermometer works.